What will happen if Yellowstone explodes? Yellowstone National Park is a picturesque place in the northwestern corner of Wyoming, in the northwestern quarter of the United States. It's so picturesque that it attracts about 4 million visitors every year. It contains untouched forests, except for well-equipped campsites, rolling hills, and most importantly, stunning geysers with hot springs that are worth seeing at least once. By the way, swimming in the thermal springs and the reservoirs formed by them is prohibited and really not worth it. The water temperature in them reaches 198 degrees Fahrenheit and above. Burns from water of this temperature can be fatal. But what could have exploded in Yellowstone? There are at least 1,000 cubic miles of magma lying in one of the magma chambers under the park. Let's find out what else is there, how high is the probability of an explosion, and what would be its consequences. The most explosive area in Yellowstone is the Yellowstone Caldera. A caldera is a depression formed by a volcanic eruption. In fact, it's a large crater. So the caldera in the Yellowstone supervolcano has an area that measures approximately 30 by 45 miles, covering a large area of the park. At a depth of five miles under the caldera is a magma chamber. It's to her that the park owes its stunning geysers and thermal springs. Five miles of depth seems impressive, but it should be taken into account that the average thickness of the Earth's crust is 22 miles. By the way, Volcanic eruption is not necessarily accompanied by explosions and other special effects. In the classification of volcanologists, this is no more than one of the types of eruption, along with magmatic eruptions, phreatic eruptions, or phreatomagmatic eruptions. The first magma chamber reaches 7 miles in depth, 56 miles in width, and 25 miles in length. The second magma chamber lies 3 kilometers under the first one. It is 4.5 times larger than the first one. Fortunately, only 7 to 17 percent of the total amount of lava is in a liquid state. Both chambers are connected to the liquid part of the mantle, the deep shell of the Earth made of liquid lava. It is the circulation of magma between the mantle and the chamber that is a cause of concern for many. From time to time, gloomy prophecies slip into the media, but fortunately, they have nothing to do with reality. By the way, a striking example is the media frenzy in September 2014, when a paper on the possible impact of a supervolcano eruption on the United States and the world was published. Yellowstone Volcano has long been closely watched. There is even a special scientific organization, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory YVO. The organization was formed by a number of state universities located near the park, the Park Administration, and the U.S. National Geological Survey. How often does Yellowstone explode? Many years of research by geologists from the universities of Wyoming, Utah, and other states show that explosive eruptions of the Yellowstone supervolcano have occurred only three times in the last 2.1 million years. They formed today's caldera. The first known eruption occurred, in fact, 2.1 million years ago. The second, 1.3 million years ago. And the most recent, 664,000 years ago. As you can see, the volcano's not very active, even on the scale of the planet's history. So what is happening with the volcano in Yellowstone now? According to all official points of view and documents, Yellowstone volcano currently has a dormant status. But does this mean that nothing happens there at all? No, not at all. The volcano is still sleeping, but snoring in its sleep. Currently, scientists from the previously mentioned observatory record up to 3,000 earthquakes every year, as well as periodic rises and falls of the ground. 80% of earthquakes go unnoticed because they have no more than three points on the Richter scale. The ground level changes by no more than six inches per year. The naked eye cannot notice the slow breathing of the volcano. And these are quite natural processes that can't help but occur. Such phenomena are associated with nothing more than the circulation of lava in the chambers under the caldera. It's connected by a channel with the upper layer of the hot molten shell of the planet. From there, magma enters the chambers, which gradually cools down, decreasing in volume and melts part of the already hardened rock that flows down due to its higher density, just like paraffin and a lava lamp. 
By the way, according to the conclusions of the U.S. Geological Survey, the direct eruption of the volcano will be preceded by significant changes in the rhythm of earthquakes and magma movement. According to some estimates, the first signals can be seen months before the explosion. So what are the consequences of the Yellowstone explosion? If the supervolcano does explode, the consequences will be literally catastrophic. Firstly, Yellowstone Park itself will cease to exist as a result of a super powerful explosion that will throw rock fragments, ash, and magma in a column up to 15 miles high. The lava flowing from the caldera alone will bury a 40-mile radius around the vent. And that's just the beginning within minutes of the explosion. The lava lake will cause countless fires, the smoke from which will cover the sky. But against the background of the incredible ash cloud that will spread in the upper atmosphere and bring a long night, the impact of smoke from the fires can't be neglected. Soon, poisonous volcanic ash will begin to fall to the ground. The continental United States will suffer the most from this precipitation. Wyoming and the four neighboring states will be buried under a meter layer of hot, poisonous ash. By the way, a layer of ash two inches thick is enough to cause houses to collapse under its weight, at least those built according to the technologies adopted in the United States. The rest of the territory will not be left without its portion of ash. Even the southernmost part of the country and northern territories of Mexico will receive a few inches. The central south of Canada will suffer much more, receiving tens of inches of deadly precipitation. After events like this, the whole of North America as a continent will change forever. Although the actual direction and intensity of the ash spread will depend on specific weather conditions, it will not be easy for everyone, in any case. The number of human casualties will be measured by the populations of entire cities, and not small ones. For example, Salt Lake City, which will inevitably be destroyed to the ground together with the surrounding towns, has a population of 1.2 million people. And this is just one city. Imagine the scale of five states. Along with other consequences of the ashfall, disruption of road connections in the countries, complete cessation of air travel across the continent, pollution of drinking water sources, irreparable damage to the energy system. The catastrophic echo of such a powerful eruption will last for decades and will change the life of all mankind. Global Consequences of the Yellowstone Supervolcano Explosion The picture of the world after the Yellowstone explosion is painted in a post-apocalyptic palette. And it's not a desert landscape with empty cities and groups of survivors. The population of the planet in the first years in most countries will not change. Yes, the volcanic ash will be the last refuge for many. But for the rest, the greater danger will be the part of it that remains in the atmosphere. For at least 10 years after the eruption, this new shell formed by the smallest sulfur particles will reflect a significant part of the sun's rays. The temperature in the world for this period will fall by 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And this means the complete loss of crops on the entire planet and inevitable years of famine. After that, the apocalypse will require more traditional desert features. In the territories of America, Canada, and Mexico, which receive significant amount of precipitation in the form of volcanic ash, the land will become literally poisonous, making agricultural activities impossible for decades. Should we be worried? In fact, there's no reason to panic. Firstly, even if we use the arithmetic mean calculated from the periods between the previous explosive observations of the Yellowstone supervolcano, the probability of the next one in the coming years is one ten thousandth of a percent. The probability of the death of civilization from the fall of a giant asteroid is higher. Secondly, volcanoes are not Japanese railways. They don't work according to a clear schedule. And although such a situation may mean a premature explosion, judging by observations of other volcanoes, the time between explosive eruptions is increasing with an increase in their number at one point rather than decreasing. This is the trend. Thirdly, Yellowstone supervolcano is under constant observation. Any alarming changes will be immediately recorded and analyzed. And based on the results, appropriate preventative measures will be implemented to mitigate the consequences. So there is really nothing to worry about. The explosion of the Yellowstone supervolcano is rather a good idea for a novel or a disaster movie script than a possible option for the future.